Hello everyone. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use PLS SEM modeling technique using smart PLS software. So this is the model we're gonna work on, a uh, model for employee retention in an organization. It's a very typical model. So we have satisfaction as one construct. We have commitment as another higher order construct. We have retention here. We have stress <coughs> as a construct here and commitment is being modeled as a second order reflective construct. Uh, so the, the thing here is we're not gonna go into very much detail about you know reflective or formative. Uh, for that you can uh, probably refer to other sources, but here the focus is going to be on how to use PLS SAM model uh, step by step. So these are the constructs we have. These are the sub dimensions of commitment, which are the first order constructs here. Uh, and all these constructs are major using five point Likert scale with the higher score denoting higher levels of agreement with the statement. So for example, when it comes to retention, one denotes very unlikely with uh, agreement or one very unlikely to five being very likely. For satisfaction, one being very dissatisfied to five being very satisfied. For commitment, one being strongly agree to five being strongly agree. This should be strongly disagree. Disagree to five being strongly agree. And for stress, it's uh, one means much less than the usual, five means much more than the usual. So these are all five point Likert scale data uh, we're gonna use for our analysis. Uh, so when whenever you're doing any kind of uh, PLS, SEM, or structural equation modeling, uh, you need to talk about certain things uh, which we're gonna cover here, but we're gonna go step by step. Uh, first, uh, probably we'll do the simple model, and then we're gonna do stress as a moderator. We uh, will also talk about the mediating effect of commitment on the relationship of satisfaction and retention, and we're gonna use some multi-group analysis like marital status one being not married and two being married. So we're gonna discuss all these things step by step uh, in this series here. So again, whenever you're dealing with any structural equation modeling, first thing you have to do is you need to talk about these four things here. Sample size, missing values, outliers, and normality. So let's talk each one of that in brief. Uh, sample size, obviously we need to have a very uh, decent sample size, but we're gonna be using PLS, SEM, using uh, smart PLS. Uh, if, if you're not aware of it, uh, it's a partially square structural equation modeling technique and it works really well with a, with a smaller sample size data. So as a sample size is not a big issue here, but again, the question is how big should be the sample size? Well, uh, if you read the sources, uh, it is, uh, very conservatively it is like 10 times the largest number of structural path pointing at a particular construct so here we have only one structural path pointing at every other construct so basically you're talking about you know as low as 10 observation will do in this case or other 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 one is uh, 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 the 10 times the largest number of uh, formative constructs so we don't have any formative construct we do have one in fact, stress, it has only two items in that. And so formative construct, we're gonna talk about that when we get into PLS SEM modeling. So if it has two indicators, that means the sample and the max largest number of structural path is only one pointing to any construct here. So the greater of the two is 20. So I'm gonna, so roughly we need like 20 observation at the list, but that's too conservative, I guess. You need to have at least not the 10 times, uh probably you know 20 or 30 times the largest number of path uh a structural path pointing to a construct or the largest number of uh, formative indicators which one is greater so 20 30 might be a better approach but if you do have different sample size decent sample size here i'm going to walk you through you know, that one uh we will talk about the missing values as well obviously uh, you cannot have missing values because uh, this technique is basically a regression, uh, but uh, and regression doesn't work on missing values. So you have to have complete case analysis. So it's a complete case analysis technique. So you cannot have any missing values. You have to deal with them, either impute them 
are uh, not considered the observations with the missing values. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, outliers, uh, obviously, you know, uh, outliers do affect the the model estimation, and it creates a lot of biases in the estimation pro process. But uh, when you're dealing with uh, five-point Likert scale data, uh, I don't think outlier analysis is a uh, is required as such. If you're dealing with continuous data, then outlier analysis makes more sense. But again, if you read different sources, they have different way of doing things. Some books gonna ask you to do the box plots or Mahalanobis distance. Uh, as a researcher, you have to think about your research and think about your data and use your judgment. And my intuition say, tells me that here, since I'm using only five point Likert scale data, they are uh, such a short order uh, scale data. Uh, I don't need to conduct outlier analysis because it might not make much of a sense. So we're gonna ignore this one. We're gonna do test the normality. Uh, we're gonna do the skewness and the kurtosis uh, to make sure the data is not, uh, not very not normal. Uh, maybe that's the best way to say it. But one thing you need to keep in mind that uh, PLS SEM technique uh, using smart PLS, uh, PLS SEM technique is basically uh, uh, a non parametric uh, technique. Okay, that means it doesn't require any assumption of normality as such. But it's always better to make sure that you are not deviating far from the normal or normally distributed data because the more normal you go, the better will be the results. Um, how how much uh, deviation is allowed? Well, if the skewness or the kurtosis, they are well within absolute value of one, uh, that's considered decent, but that's too conservative. People uh, often consider absolute, absolute value of two. Absolute value of two means it could be minus, anywhere between minus two to plus two. So that's another range and more liberal is absolute value of three. So, so we're gonna talk about that as well. So with this one, I'm gonna jump to the data. We do have a multi-group analysis variable, marital status, it has two categories. And we're gonna talk about this one as we move on. So let's get to the SPSS first so that we can talk about the missing values and the normality. Uh, sample size, we're gonna talk about when we get to PLS SCM. As such, but we do have a very big sample size. So that's the data we have, uh, a lot of data here. Uh, so uh, first thing first, uh, let's see here. Uh, if you notice minus 99 is the missing data. So there are ton of missing data here. Uh, you have a lot of observation, you have 65,000 observations. Okay, this is the secondary data. Uh, somebody else has collected this data and looks like uh, it has a lot of missing values. Obviously, looks like uh, the survey was conducted only for certain group of the people in the big organization and that's all right. Uh, even after deleting this uh, missing data, if we have decent sample size, we can move on with our analysis here. So minus 99 means the missing values. So it has ton of missing values here. So we indicated that one. We have all our variables, so let's get started with the with the normality because we already taken care of the missing value. Uh, what we're gonna do is obviously we cannot impute them because imputation will not make any sense. It's just gonna dilute the data to an extent that it will remove all the variations from the data, and it will not make any sense to perform any kind of statistical analysis. So what we're gonna do is here we're not gonna impute with the mean as such or the median as such, but we're gonna ignore all the cases with the missing values. Because we have a very big data set here, 65,000 records. So even if we get like 500 to 1,000, maybe 5,000 records out of that one, I guess we are in much decent shape. Again, uh, we need to make sure that we are not omitting systematically certain group of people while deleting the observation. Uh, but this is again the secondary data and this is what we got and looks like the survey was uh, distributed to only certain uh, group of people maybe, I don't know, but a lot of missing values here. So I'm gonna, the best I can do is ignore these missing values here. So missing values get is taken care of, uh, outlier analysis, we're not gonna do it. 
uh, for 5.1 Lakers scale data. And normally we're gonna conduct that using, uh, let's say, analyze and distribute statistics and frequencies. We're gonna do that and uh, we have a lot of variables here. So I'm just gonna select what I need here. So satisfaction is measured using one item, overall satisfaction. Um, retention is also measured using only one item. Um, but you have uh, many items for uh, first order constructs for the commitment. We have effective, continuance, and normative commitment dimensions. So we're going to put those items in there. And uh, we have stress. Uh, we have work-related stress and we have personal stress. So we're going to put those one in there as well. And that's all we need. Uh, we're going to display the frequency table stats. We just need skewness and kurtosis. Okay. And we, we can do, let's say histogram. Uh, just do the normality curve. So if you run this one, uh, Frequency table, uh, not much useful here. So we can ignore the frequency table. I shouldn't have done it. Statistics here, this is what should we need here uh, because we want to uh, worry about, we need to sort of consider the skewness and the uh, kurtosis. And uh, you can browse through some of the histograms here. Obviously some of them are kind of skewed, uh, but most of them are good, I would say. Uh, again, we should not worry about the skewness as much because the PLS SEM is a non parametric test and it doesn't, as such, uh, require any normality assumption to be fulfilled. In fact, it works very well with the highly not normal data. So, this should not worry us too much, but still, uh, we need to browse through it. Most of them are very normal, some are skewed. Uh, we cannot transform them because they are on a short order scale, five point Likert scale. Transformation will not make any sense. The the max we can do is if you are not satisfied with the normality, we have to just drop that particular item. So that's the one thing. Uh, again, uh, this is very subjective. Uh, we can do more concrete test uh, statistics here. I'm gonna copy this table and put it in Excel. I already did that here. Uh, let 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 me walk you through the process. So I'm gonna put it here, okay? And uh, I don't need to have this thing uh, standard error. Let's say that. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna highlight this thing and do the conditional formatting. I'm gonna use uh, let's say uh, if it is uh, greater than one highlight with the red, I'm sorry, one, okay. And if it is less than one, okay, say the minus one and give me the green one, okay. So if you see here, uh, most of them are within the range of uh, plus one to minus one, which are good. Uh, that's, a, that's a normally accepted uh, limit, I would say. But even some can go as liberal as, you know, uh, plus minus two or plus minus three. So these are all not that bad. Curtis is pretty high here. We're gonna watch those items and if they give any trouble, probably we can delete them uh, because we have multiple items here. Uh, for at least you know uh, commitment so something that you need to keep in mind um, but overall I'm pretty satisfied given that PLS SCM works pretty well it's not parametric test and it works pretty well with the not normal data skew data so and we don't have that much skewness uh, as such we do have some kurtosis issue but not a not a big deal here so so what what, what is my takeaway from this analysis well uh, I'm done with the sample size because if you look here, uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back to Excel file here. Okay, see here, uh, you have out of 65,000, 
almost 51,000 observations have missing values, but still we have around 13,000. Or at least if you, you know, even if you do it across all the uh, cases, still you might end up getting 10,000 records, which are more than enough for our, our analysis. So sample size is pretty decent, much more than what we need. Um, outlier analysis, we're not gonna do it for on a five point Likert scale data because of such a short order scale that outlier analysis might not make any sense. Uh, then normality is not an issue. We just saw that here, uh, kurtosis and skewness and missing values, you know, we have coded them as minus 99 and we're gonna ignore them. We're not gonna impute them with the mean because if you impute them with the mean with this many observation missing values, you know, there won't be any variation left in the data and statistics might not make any sense. So we're not gonna impute them, we're just gonna ignore them. So with this, my focus will turn on to the second video where we will talk about uh, how to build the PLS SEM model. Thank you very much for watching.